ID. Our first topic is concerning Kylie Jenner. She was recently featured on the cover of Forbes magazine and said to be the youngest ever self-made billionaire. We want to talk to our hosts about this. Some people think that it's a little cray cray that she's been named the youngest billionaire ever and they have a little bit of a problem with the self-made part of the article. What do you guys think? Well, I've, I've actually started a couple of companies and it is not easy. Um, what she's been able to accomplish, and it, like self-made being this, this big title that she's, yeah. uh, that she's carrying, everybody is going to need help when they're starting a business, period. Like, it's, yeah. it's not something you can just pull off. I, my business was based on uh, manufacturing. If it wasn't for the contacts that I had in my previous jobs, you know, I wasn't just given the contacts and things like that. You use this, the resources and the tools that you have on hand. The fact that she had a really strong social media presence and that she was primarily responsible for building up, mm -hmm. I mean, due to her family and things, I mean, it definitely gives her a leg up. But, I mean, come on, she, she is the face of the franchise. And for her to be able to keep her nose clean for so long in that family is remarkable in itself. Well, nose clean is sort of subjective, though, because really they make their living off of not really. But you're saying having they. Clean you're, saying, <laughs> you're saying you're saying they. Kylie Jenner, as an as an entity herself, like she is actually pretty remarkable that she can be in that environment and still be seen as this, you know, sort of pure entity. I don't think people see her as pure. Oh, she was having sex with Tyga when she was like 17 or something like that. I mean. Well. I don't think that's how she's viewed. I mean, no. he, not that it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying she's not she's, viewed as like a pure, not, I don't think that's the image well, she I mean, this, this is a family who also made their claim to fame based off of one sex tape. Right. I mean, come on, right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not hating on them because I think they've taken the fame that they've got and they've ran with it. But, but I think that they do have fame and that does help for them with uh, and a lot any of, project. A lot of girls do look up to her as well, you know, and I think like she used, she used her resources and her yeah, and no. the opportunity that she had. But the question, like most, everyone's not, um, they're questioning the fact that they said that she's self-made. And we've seen that dictionary.com also, you know, threw in a, a bit of shade, shade there. Yeah. And um, Lola tweeted and she said that there's nothing inspiring or motivating about Kylie Jenner. Because now here the question is, is she really self-made? I mean, it's... It's like saying that she's running a race, but instead of starting from the beginning, she started like midway because right. of her background and her family. So now the question is, is she self-made or is she the youngest billionaire out there? Right. Well, I have be. no problem with that. She's the that she would be like a really young billionaire because you're either a billionaire or you're not. Oh, you're not. If someone no says it's like that. being pregnant, it's either you are or you're, <laughs> you're not. not. Okay, okay, so let's let's apply. She wasn't born with these assets either. Like she built them. Like yeah. when she was born, she was living. Off well, she was born into. into she was you know, born into a wealthy into family a wealthy that's family famous. But she, she herself wasn't a billionaire. She didn't have and those assets. Obviously, she did. She worked on it mm -hmm. with her cosmetics and so on. And yeah. she is the most financially successful of any of the out of the credentials. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's give her a qualifier here. Let's say okay, when she came out of the starting gate, she was worth a hundred million dollars based on her family, oh, oh, no. which I think is way higher than their actual worth was. I mean, well, she and, was 10 but years I think old. most of it is the fame. Can we give her, can we give her, can we give her maybe, um, say, okay, if she makes a billion plus a hundred million dollars for her head start, now she's qualified to be a, a, a self-made billionaire? Like, w at what point do we... She qualifies to be a billionaire. Well, I, well we're, yeah, all of us agree on that, I think. The youngest self-made? The, the self, yeah, youngest self-made She's the youngest, we can say she's, no, she's the youngest billionaire out there. To be. Her, her, to business be. <laughs> a, her business is 100% owned by her. By her. It's her business. She's actually cut off at one point. Like when she's 14 years old, she was um, cut off from her income from the rest of the family. Family, yeah. Right? So, mm -hmm. you know, th this, is, this is her, her handlers, her managers, and her being able to promote this brand that, she's, that has been created in her she name. She could have handled it wrong as well she could have you know not been but let's virtuous. let's also look at and add it this way say any random person decides to start a right, um, cosmetics um, line or something right. and are they gonna achieve the success that she achieved in three years Liz? no because she not. she managed to get to that mark where she is now within three years yeah 
and let's be real. Well, yeah, no, was it substantially wasn't. easier for her than most it was of people? Yes, but and still. of course she yeah. did work hard and right. obviously to reach exactly. that. But I don't think. I mean, I personally am not saying that she didn't work hard or even that she doesn't deserve it. But I'm my thing with it is like if it were just a person who didn't have any fame or didn't come from that from family, her. there's no way that she would have been as successful as, as she as would she have. Is, and this also brings us into the question of, is anybody really self-made? self-made you know, any, everybody gets at some point, to, somehow we're all aided right. by mm-hmm. to reach a certain And that's why, point. you know, the rich people stay rich because they, they're already born in this sort of family and they go on to make their own companies and yeah. Yeah. But the, the thing that's in question here is the merit of it. You know whether she qualifies as earning it herself. You know, well, let's, but it's see, really let's, about see, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Kylie about. Jenner. We strip her down of all of her social media, all her social media power. Um, we throw her into a ghetto somewhere and say, "Can you survive?" You know, it, it, <laughs> and then she comes out of that and she becomes a billionaire. All of a sudden, she's this fame and for, she's this incredible story, mm-hmm. right? But because she was born into this family, we're devaluing her her level of success. I mean, I'm not no, devaluing her devalu- level of success. I'm just saying she's not self-made. Because so, also, what I was thinking about, um, she also in one of her, I think it was one of her interviews, she said that one day she wishes to pass her business on to her daughter. Yeah. So I think my question is, she's doing that. okay, now she's gonna give it to her daughter's gonna inherit it, and her daughter's probably gonna, continue, and it ends up becoming more successful. Mm-hmm. Is that gonna be self-made? Well, by well, her well, by that time, it's going to be self-made trillionaire, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, see, just yeah. star is the first self-made <laughs> trillionaire. Self-made but you see, because an uh, urban dictionary said that self-made is becoming successful uh, by working and not inheriting something. Basically, what they're trying to say is you starting from scratch. So even though a daughter can turn out to be like a trillionaire, it's still not well, going to be self made. Again, I think it, it depends on your definition of self made because I also have a definition here that says having become successful or rich by one's own efforts. So, did she put effort? She did put effort. Absolutely. She did. And was she successful? Yes. So, I would say, like, according to this definition, she would qualify as self made. The one, I agree, that if it's that definition, then I think So, I think it's basically just what Def- each person what what Because dictionary.com. Had the definition that they posted of being uh, successful in life unaided. Unaided. And Urban Dictionary says it's being successful without. So they can't even get their definition straight on Mm. the front of what it actually means anyway. I I would say, like, no matter how high her launch pad was when she started, her rocket has exceeded Mm. any expectations. Get it, girl. I mean, you know, she's making money and we're talking about her, so we're we're doing exactly what she wants. Her self-propulsion. How did she get up to this point versus where she started, how high she started off at, right? But one thing I want to mention is uh, Josh Josh Ostrovsky mentioned that um, he's a famous Instagrammer and he started a campaign to raise a million, 100 million, to help her get to the billionaire mark. Yeah, they started and to go I just, I'm just like, no, you, how? And he literally stated that I can't live in a world where Kylie Jenner is not a billionaire. So my question is, <laughs> so yeah. you, you can live in a world where people are suffering daily, right. you Don't know, and prove, you know, but you're willing to raise money for her. Yes, yeah. I think it speaks to like the values of our society, honestly, like that we would value that so much more that we can't live in a world well, where Kylie well, Jenner is not a billionaire, but we can let all of the crazy like well, the, things uh, that are okay. happening. Well, how today. about this then? What's she doing with the money? Well, we think of her differently if she sits there and she makes all this money based on the success, and then we look at Kylie Jenner a few years from now, and she's helped build schools across uh, across. Um, you know, but still, poor, she doesn't need one hundred million dollars yeah. from anybody. <laughs> <laughs> she she can make yeah. it on her own. She doesn't it's need crazy. that money. I know a lot of people who could use one hundred million dollars. Like there are so many I better causes. Please, I would say <laughs> if you want to give me a hundred thousand dollars, anybody, <laughs> let me know. She's pretty self sufficient at this stage of the game. She doesn't need the Kardashians. Yeah. Mm. Let's quit it, people on Instagram. Please, <laughs> need some better priorities. <laughs> So our next topic 
has to do with who should pay on the first date. A recent study that was featured in Psychology Today reveals that women believe men who pay for the first date are more likely to be attracted to them. So what do you guys think? Who should pay on the first date? And do you think that that's a sign of attraction when somebody, I guess either male or female, is willing to pay for the date? Well, I guess the psychology behind it, like yes, it is more attractive. Whoever pays, like even if the woman pays, the men might find the woman slightly more attractive because they are taking initiative, you know, it's like they care, you know. But it, like if a, if a woman pays for for the meal or whatever it is that you're doing, um, wouldn't that sort of say, tell something about their personality? Like she's a dominant female that they could be I different. Like it'd be me. different than it'd be different than a guy. It's just the that's just the expectation. That's just normal. That's that's the role that they're supposed to play. Well, so I what does that say like, about you? I feel like that perception of like women being dominant, dominant because they're paying is kind of like you know outdated. Like men and women are seen as equals now. Yeah, so it's. It right. shouldn't think, be an issue. I think that it's... More of an ego issue. Yeah, I think, right? I think it's the perception, like you guys are saying, that women are not supposed to pay that makes them seem like they're dominant or something. But I think it's more of just who, whoever Personally, feels like they want to pay. I just feel pay. like um, whether it be the woman or the man that pays for the bill, I mean, if uh, for the date, if there's going to be a potential for a relationship. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't matter like who, who pays for the first date. But I just feel like if you are going to pay, or personally I feel like I'm going to pay for the date, or if he's going to pay for it, I'm just going to feel like I'm indebted to him. Right. That's the so, same as I feel. So, let's but just the go. truth is you're not indebted to him. You just feel that you are. But that's if there's, if there's a potential for a relationship. You know, I, I don't have a problem, but if you're not interested, then... Well, well like, you should, sorry. No, no, okay. Usually, um, not just a date, like, even if you're, you're inviting someone to a dinner or whatever, yeah. the person inviting, it's, it's kind of like they have the to etiquette pay. to, like, to be able to at least offer, because they're the ones choosing the location, so they should... Like, you don't know the income bracket of the other person, if they can even afford it. Yeah, so, so basically, you don't want, like, as a guy, so, um, do you want to take me out for an expensive dinner? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, just this, I just booked this, uh, you know, um, a, a couple of seats at uh, La Rouge, the nice French restaurant, and then maybe a little, uh, you know, a concert or something like that afterwards, and then sit there and look at and the person And that's, I was also considering, considering that, like, you invite the person uh, out, but you don't know what their financial situation is yeah. or and yeah, you exactly. choose this expensive place and maybe the person wants to go on a date and they're just not sure whether or not to say it and when they say yes they expect you to pay right. for it because i mean why go for an expensive place yeah. if you you don't know the other person's situation so. exactly so i think the person inviting and planning it should at least offer to pay and for if it. the other person wants to pay half, and then like so that, that goes one step back then so who initiates the date? Whoever the initiates date. a date should yeah, exactly. be should be. Oh, we should so go for dinner sometime. You know, this mm -hmm. translates to I'm gonna buy you dinner. No, but if you just say we should go for dinner sometime, mm -hmm. I'll obviously jump in and be like, okay, we should go to this place, mm -hmm. okay. which kind of gives a lead to I'm suggesting and I this. Go, Cha -ching, free dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they said the same article actually said that. Um, studies have shown that even though this like societal expectation is that a man, man. or a woman could mm -hmm. could like in 2018 uh, supposedly a man <laughs> or a woman can ask out on the date that in reality it's still mostly men that will ask. Okay, so we're talking about where in states or are we just talking in general? Because my in family general. is general. my family is Dutch, and there's just you know you go you Dutch. Go Dutch. <laughs> there's a reason right. for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now if I we're going out on a date. I'm sorry, I asked her for it. She, asked, she asked me out on a date, so I'm gonna reciprocate right now. Okay, okay. If, we go on a, if we go on a date and we're in Holland, if I pay for the date, I'm getting late. And that's oh. just a societal ex expectation. Yes. So when I asked you, I said, like, How do you want to deal with the bill? I know whether I'm scoring or not. not. Yeah, but so isn't you, that crazy? I but that's, that's but insane. that's the way it's always that's that's, that's in Holland. Dope. That's the way it is. Yeah. Are you going Dutch? Right. And that's the expectation. It's like, hey. I shelled out, I 
Sure. What do I get? You yeah. know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's just it, it's a yeah. kind of like a tapping your toe. Or well, whatever, my right? personal feeling. So, like, if I go on a date with a guy, and that's the other thing. It's like it, I think we always initially assume it's a guy and a girl, but of course now it's like it could be two guys, it could be two, two girls. Yeah. But when I go out on a date, if a, even if a guy asks me, if he were to say something like, let's go to this really expensive restaurant, I would have no problem being like, hey, let's go to a less expensive restaurant because I'm poor. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I've said that before, like, because I always want to pay half, and so if I can't afford it, I would just say, let's go to yeah. like a cheaper place. And I've never had a problem with them being like, but no. I guess this is like a first date we're talking a about. A first date, right? If I think if, if it's further first along, date. I don't mind if the person pays, but on the first date, I feel it's, it's like sets a good expectation about um, like, we're both equal and. Where does chivalry come in, uh, come into that, to that situation, right? Or that, uh, you know, that scenario. Cause I mean, for me, I will just, I'll just assume that I'm paying and it's my thing. It's. You know, it's, right. it's not necessarily my role, but it's to show that chivalry is not dead kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, and the, the chivalry argument is always, like, a part of it. Like, do you, what do you guys think? And for me, I, I don't, like, I'm not offended if a guy mm -hmm. asks to pay, you know, but I always will say, oh, let's go, let's I think, split it. I think people are... Um like focusing too much on the money of it. It's more about like your connection with yeah. the person. Like, money shouldn't be that big of an issue. Like, whoever mm. wants to pay, and if you, if you want to split it, split it. But so you would be okay if a guy wanted to pay, or if they were really persistent on it, like I would let them because I think again it's just another ego issue. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. But I have another point to bring sure. up. Um, they, I read on the article they say that what about making turns on who pays for the date. Like so, taking turns. Yeah, like taking We're turns. We're talking the first date though. Yeah. Like who's initiating the contact and who's initiating the relationship, right? Hey, I'm interested in you and I want to spend time with you. And I'm going to spend a little bit of cash. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? it's like on the first date, I think, uh, if you know that you're going to go on a second date with the person, I think it's a little bit easier to say, oh, like, I'll let him... For me, anyway, if I know in my mind that the date's going good and I think to myself, okay, I'll go on another date with this guy, I'm probably more likely to let him pay for the date because then I'll think, okay, next time I, I can pay for it. Yeah. Especially if he wants to pay, I'll just give it to him, right? Yeah. But if I am at the date and it's not going very well, then that's just definitely, like, I will not let him pay for the date. So what, what if you go on a date um, and the... Uh, Lady is so persistent on paying. I you, will. I, how would you I, feel about that? When I was when I was younger, like in my in my early twenties, I would totally fight that, and I would insist because I'm the man. That's my role. Yeah. But as time went on, I actually realized that that's her asserting her position in the in the relationship as an equal. Mm -hmm. yep. So I don't. I don't. If she, if a girl says I'm paying for this, I'm paying for that, or I'm paying for the taxi or whatever, I'll try to push a little bit. And then I'll be okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'll let it. I'll let it slide. And then I'll have my opportunity. I say, okay, well, I'll I'll pay for the next, the next thing, thing or something like that. So we've got an agreement, and now we're building a relationship, right? And yeah. you know, finances are like one of the number one reasons for relationships to break down. So you That's need true. to kind of establish that rapport with each other. And also, one thing like uh, mostly back in the days, um, if a, a lady and a guy were on a date. The waiter or the waitress would normally uh, bring the bill and put it more to the right. male side. Yeah. Always, but yeah. today it's more like I'll just put it in, in the, the middle, in the middle, <laughs> and you guys decide it's gonna go <laughs> for it. So it's like the awkward moment where yeah, it's you're like, sitting in the middle, and you're looking at the other person, and, and you're like, okay, you. what's gonna happen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, a way of avoiding that problem altogether, and I, I played this little trick before, is you just say. Hey, sorry, you're on the next date. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got, I got, um, I got, I got tickets to, I got, I got tickets to a concert. I got an extra one. Do you want to come with me? Mm, that's right? a nice then, way to put it. Then you've got, you know, that's where the finances are sort of broken down. She wants to pay for the cab or dinner beforehand or something like that. Mm. It's like you know, not, now you're already, not too much expectations. Out yeah, of I, I have this thing I want to share with you. Yeah. You know, opposed to. Hey, I'm gonna pay for. Yeah. I'm gonna pay for everything tonight, kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's better because before it was like we have our roles, you know, like the men's role, the women's role, and the day. Whereas now it's kind of just open. It's yeah. equal. How do rules? How do rules play? In uh, like when guys, when guys. Uh, 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 well, it depends. I mean, I certainly know friends of mine who will want 
the guy, the other guy to pay for them. Yeah. Like, I know a lot of guys like that, but then, of course, I know many guys who want to uh, split the bill. Um, but I think it's a little bit easy. Maybe, like, the, there's not such a um, history of, yeah, like, the girl have, maybe not paying in the past, mm -hmm. and then the guy feeling, like, a little bit of a responsibility to pay or something, because in, in gay relationships, like, it's more of, like, an equal, equal. footing. It's already but there's equal. There's still right? dominant no. roles. There's still dominant roles, right? and that's where it comes in. It's, like, if, if there's, like, You're asserting yourself uh, the role. assertive one and then the not so... It, so there is that. It's like, especially if there's an age difference, that's another thing that I found. Like the older person is like likely to, to pay. pay. Yeah. Because I've dated guys who are like older than me, and if that was the case, then a lot of times they would want to pay. But I always just has to split, and that's that's where the whole like not wanting to go to a fancy place, place comes in. Comes in. Because the, a lot of times that would be the thing. It's like they mm -hmm. want to take you to a fancy place, and I always feel like if somebody wants to take you to a fancy place and they like insist on that, then they're thinking in their mind, oh. If I take this guy to a fancy place, then I know what's gonna happen later on because yeah. blah blah blah. So yeah. th those yeah, the feelings. So <laughs> those. know we're going Dutch. So no. those, <laughs> those kind of expectations, like the expectation that oh, if I pay for something, that I'll get a little bit of action uh, after this, yeah, is yeah. still definitely okay. alive in the gay community. So well. what if we move on to the second date? So now let's say they agreed ah. on, you know, um, making turns. Yeah. I pay for the date. You pay for the next one. Sure. But now, what if I have an appetite on the day that <laughs> he has to pay? So now it's like, it, it brings into that the situation of, can I order this? Should mm. I order it? And obviously, I'm not going to ask him, like, are you fine if I order this? Right. Yeah. So I just feel like if making turns, it's mm. not really all for me. It's just, it just puts you in a really yeah. awkward situation yeah. when I'm it comes rather. to deciding what you're going to have. Yeah. Or what if you go to a really expensive the place, place the next time? Yeah. But that's your that's your job when you're hosting someone when you go out though, right? And sit there and I look at the menu and I notice there's a couple of pricier pricier items. Trick I'll play is I'll start looking at those items and I'll go, have whatever you want. Puts the person at ease. I brought you Obviously, to a restaurant. Okay, yeah. If I had a budget, I would have taken you somewhere else. Right? Exactly true. So I want you to relax. You know, mm -hmm. don't worry about that. I've got this. Sorry, one. you dates with me now. Yeah, this one's like, <laughs> she's, she's closer. <laughs> I was waiting for a follow up thing, but it's it would last. <laughs> well, and that is something that I have done also. Is like if I was like in this particular relationship I'm talking about that I was with somebody that was older than me, like I would pay if we went to like a really cheap place, and he would pay yeah. if we went to an expensive yeah. place. So I was okay with that, but as long as I felt like I just want to contribute something. Yeah, because right? so otherwise you feel bad. Yeah, yeah. but okay, we go we go on our date, and I'm insisting on paying for absolutely everything, and that becomes sort of. Does that sort of make you feel, feel awkward? Yeah, yeah. Makes no, it there definitely. Go, like he's he's show, like what are his qualities? What are yeah. what is it? What are his values? Like he's yeah. trying to dominate me? Is he trying to? Anything? And also, is he trying to pay for that? Also, this money. Like, that also like more than just it's like what he's paying for. Yeah. Yeah. You're really setting the bar high yeah. uh, for me because then yeah. if you're insisting on paying for everything, you're like gonna create this expectation of like, I'm going to expect you to right. pay for because you don't give me like an equal chance or for me just to, you know, contribute to anything. Yeah. So next time I'll just expect you to pay for everything. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, what's the reason, well, if I pay for dinner, would you, would you as a woman automatically like uh, pay for the cab or Definitely. would you automatically say, say something like, hey, you know what, we just had a nice dinner, I'll, let's go for a drink. I'll, you know, I'll, yeah, I'll buy you a drink or I'll something. I'll buy you a drink or something. Yeah. Then I know. <laughs> oh, I'm going back. Back. Going back. Okay, oh, great. Well, that's that. some good ideas on that. <laughs> Thank you for your input, okay. So last year in 2017, Sophia the robot, the AI robot, was given citizenship in Saudi Arabia. We're going to talk about what the implications of that are and if we feel like that's an appropriate distinction to give to an AI. What do you guys think? Well, my first reaction was, really? A robot. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, a robot. Yeah. Cause, but I guess we're getting to that stage now where we kind of have to consider it's these things with the technology advances and having robots, which are, they're intelligent, right? Like some sort of AI, right? So we kind of have to consider what the policies and things will be for that. But then I was just like, you're granting citizenship to a robot while they're 
actual people yeah. that are, mm. you know, that are wanting citizenships, yes. but you're not granting it to them. So, and a lot, a lot of people are also um, talking about the issue how in Saudi Arabia, a lot of women don't even have so the right, these rights, rights that this yeah. robot now has. That's the part that's so hypocritical about it for me. Like, uh, I like this social media user who said, in the kingdom, we're quick, the, the social media users in the kingdom were quick to point out that the robot could be entitled to more ro rights, rights than the country's female subjects who must have a male guardian, must wear yes. a hijab, cannot mix with unrelated males, and are unfairly represented in the justice system, and they were only recently granted permission to drive. Yeah. But this isn't a female. This is a toaster. Yeah, but it's a, mm. if she's presenting it's as like a, a female, female. And it doesn't has... matter if she's... Re... I, I have friends who dress like women, and they're, and they're you know, like, that doesn't make them a female, necessarily. But it's... Like, as far as your... Yeah, but should a robot of any Arabia, kind have more... It has to do with your plumbing. So take, so take out the question of whether or not Sophia is a woman, or say yeah. she's a man. She has more so rights than She the, still has more rights than the women, than the actual female. human females yeah. of that country. He's still using the word she. The point is, the point is... Well, <laughs> he has more rights. <laughs> it has more rights. It has more rights. More rights. Has more rights. But, they, but I mean, even her creators referred to her as a she. Yeah. So that was their yeah. intention. Yeah. And she now, was modeled after Audrey Hepburn. Is the model the Hansen Robotics? Hansen Robotics is the, is the yes, company. Hansen. They're not Hansen AI. They're Hansen Robotics. Robotics. Now there's a major, major difference between AI, which is artificial intelligence, that actually has the ability to process information right. and react to the information that it processes, mm -hmm. opposed to what Sophia is, which is basically a puppet. Yes, mm -hmm. true. That's she true. is she. It's whatever the. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I think we can say she is its creator. This, this glamorized toaster. Sure. This glamorized toaster is basically no more intelligent than Kermit the Frog. Well, and if you watch her interviews, they're all, like, you can tell that they're all scripted. Mm, because yes. the interviewers always have the script with them, and then you can tell that she's just answering the pre-programmed script as, yeah, questions that they've she's asked her. I mean, to it's it. insane to me, because it, even in an interview that she did on CNB and CNBC, mm -hmm. she literally said, they asked her, will you destroy humans? humans. And, she, and, and she, her exact quote is, okay, I will destroy humans. Yeah. So the ethical questions about, like, and she what said some the, racist for, things Yeah, she well. said a racist yeah. comment. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, these, are, these are based on, these are responses that are pre-programmed responses mm -hmm. that are based on very specific questions that are recognized in an algorithm mm -hmm. that will just give a response. This my, is not artificial intelligence. My question is, if she gets to a point where she's in a situation or she, I don't know how to, to say it, but yeah. where she's not programmed, for that specific moment, yes. What's going to happen? That's what I mean. She's not organically intelligent. She's just exactly. She's just programmed to do so. Certain responses. What's going to happen? And what makes me even more upset about this is that they were getting citizenship for this thing that's not even that intelligent. There, and then Saudi Arabia is not even like giving that same the same rights to yes. its female population or immigrant workers who yes. are treated horribly there mm -hmm. and really? also don't have citizenship. And then on top of that, Hanson Robotics is just using it as a marketing ploy right. to invest in other projects that they're doing yes. and not even worrying yeah. about the AI that she supposedly has. So I have a quote from the head AI researcher, uh, Jan Likun from Facebook, and he's also a professor at New York University who said, it is a fact that many people are being deceived into thinking that this mechanically sophisticated animatronic puppet is intelligent. It's complete bullshit. True. Absolutely. And that's a guy who knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And so, and for him to say that, I think it's like really clear that this is just a marketing ploy by the company. If you look into David Hansen, the creator of this, you know, the CEO of Hansen oh, Robotics, yes. he's super shady. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, I'm just so over it this. It is a marketing ploy. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. totally a marketing ploy. And it, for them to be so irresponsible to just, go along with this, be totally fine with her getting citizenship, and then all being like, oh, it's going to help society, so, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Well, maybe if you really wanted to help society, you would yeah. work to get these women the rights that they need, mm -hmm. and also and the immigrants that they need. To, I yeah. think there was an interview where she did, the robot did say, like, I will help women yeah, like, get rights. And stuff like, like yeah, But she women. said that, but... Yeah, she's programmed. Yeah, yeah, she's exactly. there's, so it, there's, it two, there's two points that can go along with that. Um, number one, 
look at where she was presented and where this all, how this all played out. There was an interview that was done on a stage with billions of dollars worth of investors right. all watching. When they issued the Sit. announcement that this robot is not AI, not, not being, anything like that, was getting citizenship. That just raised the stock of that company by oh, I don't that, know how many yeah. fold. And so if I went up to you and I was a Saudi interview. politician, I said, you want to make a quick hundred mil? Mm. Right. Give this robot citizenship. You're going to make headlines around the world. You're going to be on the ID show. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. But this, it, it, it reeks of, it reeks of someone trying to manipulate. Play, play, play. Those. It, this was an investor conference mm -hmm. and that's when they yeah, decided to do it and it made international headlines it was brilliant yeah, absolutely brilliant and the other thing is it's brilliant for saudi arabia too because saudi arabia at this time like they used to get a lot of their wealth from oil but now they're trying to transition it's into it's technology yeah. so they want in the top of mind for their country oh technology so for them to do this it's like now we're all talking about saudi, saudi arabia, arabia and technology yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. so they they succeeded in shifting everybody's now view my, about my question is what's the next thing like now for AI Hansen. or for Hanson Electronic or Hanson? Either way. Robots. So now we have robots or a robot that mm. got citizenship. What's the next? Do thing? we think there's going to be more cases what, like this? What if I go and I build a hundred or a hundred thousand Sophias, you know, and I and I sit there and I go and I bring them into Saudi Arabia in my luggage. You know, do I suddenly have a hundred thousand people who are allowed to vote? You right, know, that's, do I have that's 100, one of the ethical concerns. It's, are, is she a citizen that's allowed to vote? Yeah. Who exactly. is actually deciding who And the other vote? thing is they don't want to um, expose the, what, what are her rights? Or right, Saudi Arabia won't say what is her rights Honorary are. citizenship. That's oh, wow. all it is. It's honorary yeah. citizenship. It's a publicity stunt it for is. them to do it. Now, there is a second point with this when it comes to, the, to female rights or women's rights or human rights in Saudi Arabia, period. In a country that is desperate for any form of progress, yeah. why are we kicking them in the nuts for such a... This is a little tiny sliver of progress in the right direction where a female entity is being given granted rights of some form. Mm -hmm. This can be representative like within society, within their culture. Sooner or later, something along those lines, it's a little bit of progress in a place that's desperate for any form of yeah. pro progress. I think and it has brought attention to that to issue as well. Yeah, exactly. It's talking about exactly. It. Women are just, like, they, they're, they finally have a progressive king. You know, someone who's actually it's trying, trying to, fight to fight for, for them. Let's, let's celebrate them for even the stupidest, silliest publicity stunt that puts a female figure in the spotlight and not in a, in, you know, a, a paper bag. Or but whatever. I think that's a super positive outlook because... I'm super positive, Zach. <laughs> because, I mean, and, and I hope that that is the, the, re the reality and the reaction that it will get, but unfortunately I have to be a little bit pessimistic about it and think that in the end, is it really going to get the women, women their, citizens, what they the, their rights, and is it really going to get it, it the... Kind of am I Sorry. Because and to me, it doesn't matter if it's the Hanson Robotics gets some, another billion dollars, dollars so. or if the already super rich men in Saudi Arabia get more money, mm -hmm. like which is, I think, the only actual. My so so painted as a big thing that's like, oh, this is going to help women so much. Well. My thing is, accurate. why did it have to take a robot for women to get their right to drive? <laughs> that's a good Well, it's got to take good. something. Something's got to. Do you think the robot gave them the right? Because right? it was. It, well, this is a, this it, it was influenced. Been... The robot was definitely part of the decision. Like, it influenced the final decision. Possibly, but I think it was more the protest that went on the year before, where women were getting into their and cars then the and robot was just writing, the, mm, defiantly the driving cars, yeah, the robot and taking, was just picture, the taking pictures and posting it onto, yeah. onto social media. And the robot was the And then they have a very progressive king who sat there, or more, well, very progressive in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> oh, let's let women drive. That's progress in Saudi Arabia. That's still progress, right? Yeah. So, okay. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the ID show. We really appreciate you watching. Thank you to all the fabulous hosts that we had today. I really Hello. appreciate you guys being here. And thank you so much to the production team. We definitely couldn't have done it without you. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and here on YouTube. Bye-bye. <laughs>